Hi there, so this is the first in a series of videos on apoptosis assays. If scientists are working with cells, let's say cancer cells, and they're trying to find a way to kill cancer cells to interfere with their growth and division, one thing scientists would like to know is, is apoptosis occurring? So there has to be a way to measure whether or not apoptosis is occurring in cells. And there are many ways to assay for apoptosis, and we're going to review in this video about how Western blots can be used to detect whether or not apoptosis is occurring in cells. So if you recall what a Western blot is, it is a technique used in the lab to detect proteins. And you can detect um, different proteins, you can detect the different sizes of those proteins, as well as the relative amounts of those proteins. And so this is actually very useful in apoptosis because when apoptosis is occurring, there are a number of proteins that change their size. So if you recall, caspases become cleaved when apoptosis is occurring. And caspases, again, as are a family of proteins, they are proenzymes or zymogens. So when they are synthesized, they are made in a large um, inactive form. And when caspases become activated, uh, it has become the, it's, it's because they become cleaved by a protease. Uh, so caspase 9, for example, in its pro full-length form is about 46 kilodaltons. If caspase 9 is cleaved by the apodosome, it will become activated. And that happens in the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis induction. And you can see here, caspase goes from its pro form to its active form, which is about 37 kilodaltons. So we know caspase 9, for example, is cleaved by the apodosome when apoptosis is occurring via the intrinsic pathway. So if a scientist wants to see whether or not this is occurring, they can use a Western blot. So how is that? Well, let's look in these first two lanes. In lane 1, no apoptosis is occurring. In lane 2, apoptosis is occurring. So if you use an antibody that detects for the caspase 9 protein, in the first lane, you will find this full-length protein, the proenzyme version, and there's no cleaved version. So in lane one, caspase 9 is not getting cleaved, so it is not active. The epitome is not formed, and you have this large full-length proenzyme version. In lane two, if apoptosis is occurring via the intrinsic pathway, then what you will see is that the pro version decreases in intensity because it is being cleaved, and the cleaved version is increasing in intensity because it is now present, whereas before it was all in the pro version. So using a um, gel electrophoresis, separating proteins based on their size, and then using an antibody in the Western blot to detect those proteins will allow you to detect full-length caspases and cleaved caspases. So again, the cleaved versions are the active versions, and you should probably know what cleaves them. In this example here, caspase 9, we, as we talked about in a previous video, caspase 9 is cleaved by the apodosome. So when you're reading research articles, you will sometimes see a Western blot for a caspase, like caspase 9. And depending on the scientist and what they want to show you, or depending on the antibody that they're using, you might just see the full-length version or the cleaved version. Sometimes you see both, depending on what the scientists decide to show you of their Western blot. Either way, those are indicators of whether or not apoptosis is occurring. If the pro version or the full-length version is disappearing, if it's going down in intensity, that means it's being cleaved. If the cleaved version is appearing or is increasing in intensity, then you know that caspase line is being cleaved. Either ones are indicators apoptosis is occurring. So this can uh, be done for all of the caspases. Another one that's commonly analyzed by Western blood is caspase 3. Again, caspases are made in their pro full-length version, though they are inactive zymogens, 32 kilodons. When caspase 3 is cleaved from its pro version into its active version, and again, um, we talked about in a previous video that initiator caspases are cleaving caspase 3 from the pro version to the active version. Now caspase 3 becomes smaller and it becomes active. So if you analyzed by Western blot protein extracts, um, when cells are not undergoing apoptosis, you would find just the full-length version. When cells are undergoing apoptosis, 
then the initiator cast spaces are cleaving cast space three. So the full length version it is disappearing and the cleaved version is appearing because the pro version or the full length version is being converted into the cleaved version. So again, you can detect this on a Western blot and when you're reading papers, you might see a, a, a region. And again, scientists don't show you the whole gel. They show you a region of the gel. And so you either might see this whole region that shows you both full length and cleave version, or sometimes they'll show you just the full length version or just the cleave version. Either way, what are your look? What you're looking at is the cleavage of this cast base. In this instance, cast base three. Um, and if cast base three is being cleaved, then we know apoptosis is occurring. Of course, it could be occurring by either the intrinsic or extrinsic pathway. Both of those pathways will result in the cleavage of caspase 3. Finally, we'll talk about the PARP protein, which we covered in a previous video. PARP proteins are DNA repair proteins, and they are cleaved by initiator caspases when apoptosis is occurring. So the full-length PARP protein is about 113 kilodaltons. When apoptosis is occurring, initiator, I'm sorry, executioner caspases will cleave PARP from this large version into an 89 kilodalton and a 24 kilodalton version. And again, when PARP gets cleaved, it is inactive. But here we're just looking at the change in size of PARP. So if we look at cells that are either not undergoing apoptosis or are undergoing apoptosis, when cells are not undergoing apoptosis, we would just see full length PARP, the large PARP. We wouldn't see any of the cleaved versions. If cells are undergoing apoptosis, then PARP is becoming cleaved, again, by initiate, but I'm sorry, execution or cast bases like three and seven. And if we now see the presence of cleaved PARP, that means apoptosis is occurring. So again, uh, in some research articles, you might see uh, Western blots that show you both full length and cleaved PARP, or you might just see just full length PARP or just cleaved PARP. But again, what you're looking at is the cleavage of PARP by uh, executioner cast bases. And if PARP is being cleaved by executioner cast bases like three and seven, that means apoptosis is occurring. So those are three examples of how Western blotting can be used to detect whether or not apoptosis is occurring. It might even tell you something about which pathway of apoptosis is occurring. Um, let's talk now about cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is a protein that is normally found in the mitochondria. Now, it doesn't get cleaved. It doesn't change its size when apoptosis is occurring, but it does change its subcellular localization. So cytochrome C, as we covered in a previous video, is found in the mitochondria. Uh, but when apoptosis is occurring, cytochrome C can exit the mitochondria through a VDAC1 channel and now be present in the cytoplasm. So detecting the presence of cytochrome C in the cytoplasm will tell you whether or not the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis is being initiated. So for this, for us to detect this via Western blot, there has to be first a step where cells are lysed or broken open and the cytoplasm is separated from the mitochondria and each of those fractions are analyzed on protein gels via Western blotting for the presence of cytochrome C. So let's look at a protein gel here. And here we're taking cells that apoptosis is not occurring, and we're analyzing the presence of cytochrome or absence of cytochrome C in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm. So if apoptosis is not occurring, cytochrome C will be present in the mitochondria, but not present in the cytoplasmic fraction. Now, let's say apoptosis is occurring, we would find cytochrome C both in the mitochondria and now in the cytoplasm. So we're not looking at a change of size of cytochrome C using this type of Western blotting. We're using Western blotting to detect the new location of cytochrome C um, via Western blotting. And of course, this required you first to do something called subcellular fractionation. So these are two examples of how scientists use Western blotting to detect um, whether or not apoptosis is occurring. So the first example was cleavage of caspases 
you can see their size change. If that's happening, then we know apoptosis is occurring. Cleavage of PARP, if PARP is being cleaved, that is an indicator of apoptosis. And then finally, cytochrome C localization, if cytochrome C is moving into the cytoplasm and now present in the cytoplasm, which again can be detected by Western blotting, that is a, another indicator of apoptosis. So all of those fairly low throughput uh, assays, um, but can be very easily done in many labs in which Western blotting is performed.